Hello and welcome to another CS Tutor Center video. In this video, we're going to talk about permutation and string. This is a video that continues from the last video, which was permutation and string. So if you haven't watched the last video, please go to the description of this video. And in the description, I have a link to the previous video, permutation and string, where we solve the problem. And in that video, I explained that using an array is better than using a hash map. And then I'll make another video to show using an array. So that's what this video is. In this video, we're gonna take the code we wrote from the last video and we're gonna modify it to use an array. Now, before we get started, I wanna say thank you to everybody who has subscribed to the channel. Because when you subscribe, that lets me know that you want me to make more of these videos. So if you haven't had a chance yet, please subscribe to the channel. that let me know that you're enjoying these videos and that you want me to make more of them. And as a result, I'll go ahead and make more of these videos. Okay, let's get started. So we saw in the constraints that S1 and S2 consist of lowercase English letters. And because it gave us that constraint, then we know that we can use an array because we can set an array to be a certain distinct number of elements. So in our case, the English alphabet has 26 letters in it. So we can make an array that has 26 elements in it. And this array will be a little bit faster in the real world runtime than the hash function, or sorry, hash map. And the reason why is because the hash map uses a hash function to calculate where to put the value into the array and where to read the value from the array inside of the hash map. And I'll show that right now. And let me say, it's good to know that the hash map and the hash and the array are both big O of one. They're both constant. So it's not gonna change your big O time complexity, but it is gonna be a little bit faster in the real world runtime. And when we can, it's nice to have code that's lighter and more efficient. So when we have a hash map, in the hash map looks like, is, looks like this. <laughs> Sorry about that funky array, but trying my best to draw it straight. All right, so I'm not gonna draw the array as big as it would be inside the hash map because I wanna fit it in here. But this will be all we need to know for how the hash map works. So the hash map has an array inside of it internally. And then there's also a hash function, which is gonna calculate, um, it's, it's gonna calculate what the, hash code is. So this is going to come out to be some big number that's going to try to be as unique as possible. And then it's going to get modded with the table size so that it stays within the bounds of this array. So it gets modded with the, the array size, I mean. So it stays within the bounds of this array. So we can just grab this calculator here. I set it on the programmer setting so that we can use the modulus. So we have 519 two, four, mod, six, and that goes to location zero. So <clears throat> if we said, put this A inside of our hash map, then it would calculate this hash code, which gets modded by the array size, which then tells us the index of where to put it inside of this array. And this array, each location is a linked list. There's different ways to write um, hash maps, but um, the one that you will want to learn is this one that I'm teaching you right now, which is there's these linked lists at each location. So and the reason why there's a linked list there is because if there's a collision, then it's going to get tacked on. And um, that's part of the slowdown too, is when there's like collisions. So let's just pretend that that Z ends up colliding at the same location, then it gets tacked on here. Now when we, let's pretend this linked list goes out like longer, right? So when we, um, when we read from this um, location zero, it's gonna, calculate it, go here, 
then it's going to scan. Okay, I found it. So, um, you know, the number of collisions, I'll just say C, that's like, you know, how long it's going to have to scan in the worst time complexity is the number of collisions, right? So that slows it down a little bit too. Now in Java, when you um, have a object with a bunch of different parameters, let's say like name, age, etc., or not parameters, sorry, instance variables, a good, a good hash code calculation would take into account all these different instance variables. And if you wrote this object here, that's on you to override that hash code method this hash function will use the hash code method to know how to calculate the, this number here. The goal of this number is to try to be as unique as possible so that we don't run into, so we lower the number of collisions that we'll have. Okay, so you see there's time that's being taken place to do all this logic. It's still constant. Admortize constant. It gets averaged out to be constant. But if we just replace all this with just an array and we say zero. There is no time there. It's just a direct lookup. Let's do that. It'd be so much better. All right. <clears throat> so first, before we change it, let's, why don't we run this to see what the real world time um, is for us. So beats 33.55% of, of Java users, 25 millisecond time. So let's just like keep track of that, copy that. Oh, let's also keep track of the memory. Why not just keep track of all of it? All right, and then we'll put that in our notes here so that when we switch it over to be an array, we can compare. And feel good about ourselves. <laughs> All right, so there we go. This looks good. All right, so what were we doing with this um, hash map? Well, let's say the S1 string looks like this A, B, B. Then we kept track of the frequency count of those letters. So we said we had one A and two Bs inside of this um, hash map. Okay, so now we're going to switch all that over with an array. But first we have to think to ourselves, how are we using this um, hash map? Well, the way we're using this hash map is, in addition to this, we're also doing this check here, which is checking to see if the matched equals the unique um, letters that are inside of this uh, hash map. Because the size checks to see how many keys there are. And um, that is the same as when we check to see how many keys there are, that's the same as saying how many unique letters do we have. So we have two unique letters inside the string. There's one A and one, one B. That's two unique letters. So we are going to need to make a variable called unique um, because the, our array isn't going to have that feature. So we're going to have to keep track of that ourselves. And then we're also doing this there, right? So our array is going to be, I'll just, you know, do this real quick. Let me go like this real quick here. Okay, so our array, our array is going to, um, at location zero, we'll say that's going to be where the letter A is going to be, and one is going to be where B is going to be, and 25 is going to be where Z is going to be. The reason why we're going to do that is because it works out really nice with like um, subtraction. So when you look at the uh, ASCII character map, you'll see that um, it has the decimal value and it has the character. So the character for A is 65 decimal value, 66 is B. Okay, dot, 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 and then all the way to Z, right? So I'm not going to, just these two is enough to explain this. So 
what we're going to do is um, whenever we when we look at this s s one string up here um, zero one two then when we read when we read from that s one string s one dot char at and let's say we read location one that's the b right so if we take that b and subtract from that a then that's the same let me rewrite what that looks like down here. So we have B subtracted from A. That's what that evaluates to, which is the decimal 66 subtracted from the decimal 65, which ends up being 1. So that's location 1. So we use this as the index now to go into this array, and we'll just increment that to 1. Okay, then we read the next B, increment that to 2, and we and previously we would have read the A, increment that to 1, so that keeps track of our frequency counts. Okay, we have what we need to be able to modify this code. Okay, so first we'll create the array, we'll call it frequency count, and I'll just, okay, yeah, I'll just call it frequency counts, even though I'll have to go through and change all the variable names. All right, so um, 26, we have 26 total, right? So that gets rid of this line We don't um, now. And then now we're looping over this. So um, instead of this line, we're going to go like this. We're going to say int c um, index equals character minus a. Okay, and then we'll see frequency counts of index plus plus. Okay, and then we also said we have to keep track of the uniques, right? And unique uh, letters equals zero. So first what we'll do is we'll say that um, if the frequency counts of that index is zero, then we know um, we haven't yet uh, seen this letter yet. So we'll say unique letters plus plus. Okay. All right. Now, in here, um, we're checking to see if this n char is inside of this um, frequency map. And if it is inside that frequency map, then we'll subtract it. And then if it ends up equaling zero, then we increment our matched. <clears throat> and so when we look at our code in here, it's like one we um, we could we we could we we don't have to check to see if it is in there or not. It's just like now it's like whatever we read out of here, it's going to be an English letter that's lowercase. So it's going to be inside of this array. It's going to be in the bounds. So we can just go ahead and, and use it. So let me just like comment all this out real quick. And we'll just go like this. We'll just say, um, okay, we'll say, okay, so now we got that index and then we'll say frequency counts of end index um, minus minus. So that just subtracted it. But before we do that subtraction, actually, yeah, we do the subtraction and then we'll check to see if the frequency counts of the end index is now zero. And then if that is zero, then we increment the matched. And then if the matched ends up equaling our unique letters, then we know that we return true. Okay, so that's that ends up being the same code when we look at this here. So we got you know, we don't have to check to see if it's in there because we know it's it's going to fit in our array anyway. Um, we go ahead and, and decrement for the location of where it's at. Uh, check to see if that's now zero. If it is, match gets incremented. And then check to see if the match equals the unique letters. So that replaces that code. OK, next is shrinking um, our window. So we have this here. So same thing. We don't have to really check to see if it contains that key. Um, 
So we just say Let's do this check first, actually. So I say, Okay, so um, come this out. So we separate. All right. So what we do here is the same thing. So we calculate the index, and then we're gonna check to see if um, at that index, if it's zero, if it is, um, then we'll um, decrement the the matched, and then we. Uh, oh, I got these backwards. Uh, um, then we um, sub subtract it. Then we add add on to it. We add on. Uh, <laughs> we we add on to it. So here we're the reason why we're adding here is because this um, that letter left the window, so the frequency count goes back up because it's no longer in the window. And then when the uh, letter enters the window, then the frequency count goes down because we just satisfied we got a letter. Okay, so go like that. Okay, so um, all right, that looks good. Run this. Okay, accepted, and then we'll run it. And let's go over here. And um, zoom. Sorry. Okay, check out the real world run times. So before it was 25 milliseconds and we only beat 33% 30, of Java users with the hash map. But now with the array at seven milliseconds and we beat 71.81% of Java users. So that's cool. You see the memory is about the same, right? Because, I mean, it's a little bit, it's a little bit better. Uh, this is 49%. And we have 63%. Okay, so <clears throat> they both use an array, right? So the hash, you know, we saw that internally there's an array. But this hash map is an object that has a little bit more stuff in it. So it, it takes a little bit more time. But mainly it's this runtime. So, so there we go. So if you liked this video, um, please, please like and subscribe. Um, you know, the Python, we can do the same thing with the Python. Why don't we go do the Python real quick, just so you can see that. All right, so we have this frequency map. So we'll we'll go ahead and change this. Um, so we'll change this to be frequency counts which equals 0 times 26. Okay, and then instead of doing it this way, we're going to um, going to do this. So we have, and then we have um, C. Oh, you have to in in Python you have to say ORD to convert it to the decimal value. So that. And then um, frequency counts of index, and then this would be plus equals one. So that gets rid of that. One thing I realized is let's let's get the real world runtime real quick so you can see the difference. Let me copy this. Let me back up a little bit. Okay, Just submit this real fast. Thirty six milliseconds. Okay, so go back here, paste that in there. Uh, 
copy this. We'll put it in a comment. Okay, so coming back over here. All right, so um, all right, now we're coming down here and we just go ahead and calculate the index. Oh yeah, then we gotta we gotta make this variable. All right, unique letters. Uh, let's go like well, let's do it right here. Okay, so that that takes care of all this. Um, so in Java, when I was writing that code, I was explaining that like we don't have to check to see if the n char is inside the frequency map because um, we know that these letters because now that so we're using this array, right? And the array has all the locations for all the letters in the English alphabet, and that's the only space we're working in. So we can just use the index right away, um, subtract off what we need to subtract off, and then check to see if it's now zero, if it is, and the match goes up. And if we have matched equaling the unique letters, then we found everything we need and we return true. Okay, so start char. <clears throat> start index plus one because we are it's leaving the window yeah so we need to add when we leave the window so that adds it um but before we add it, we want to check to see if the um, frequency counts of the start index is equal to zero. If it is equal to zero, then we're going to subtract off our match because we're about to change that. We're about to bring in a new letter. OK, so we wrote this right here which replaces this down here. You can see that replacing happening. We calculate the index, um, and then that index we use to look up with the frequency count, and then that uh, we subtract off the matched, and then we add to our uh, frequency counts so we can get rid of this. Okay, looks like, that looks good, all right. Uh, I left something out. What did I leave? N char. Um, or, oh, <laughs> I accidentally put brackets instead of parentheses. Okay, great. So we'll run this and we'll see what our time is. 34. Not a, not a super big deal in Python. Um, 
but this is 85% and we beat 90%. It's much more pronounced in Java. You see that bigger difference. Check out the memory though. Beats 15% with the hash with the dictionary. Beats 77% with the um, with the list. Okay, great. Well, if you liked this video, um, please please like it, and then also um, please subscribe to the channel because I look at those subscription counts. And then when I see that go up, I say, people like these videos, so I'm going to make more of these videos. So have a good day. All right, thank you.